Hey everybody, uh, my name is Michael. I represent Stormy Photography. And yeah, we are back in this channel where I share everything about photography, videography, and marketing. And I'm actually joined with uh, my fellow photographers, uh, Rife Matla, as well as my guy, <laughs> Isa. I don't know if I should introduce you guys or you guys should like introduce yourselves to the people so that they can get to know you, you know? But without wasting any time, you mind guys like giving giving a brief overview of like who are you as a person and your photography venture, how has it been? You know, just a brief overview to the people. I can start with you, my man. Um so yeah. My name is Rikemata. Um same name for Apa. I'm a student at the Dubs, um a photographer, that's why I'm here today. Mm. So um my journey has been yo, I can't even find a word but it's been like a roller coaster. <laughs> Goes up and down, eh? When I think about how I started uh, where I am now. So yeah, it's been a yo I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool man, that's cool man, that's cool man. Uh, I'm sure the people viewing the podcast would actually get to know you as a person when they yeah. listen to uh, you answer all the questions that follow you. But yeah, I can just give a brief overview of yourself, man. Yeah, I'd say I share the same sentiment as Rafa Matla. It's been a roller coaster. It hasn't been easy. And to think that from when I started to where I am now, I've actually never owned a camera of my own. So all the work that I've been shooting, it's been cameras from people, you know, friends, mm. family and stuff like that. Mm. So it has been a roller coaster and it's been a long time coming. But I feel like there's still more to come. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also, oh, I didn't even introduce myself, but my name is Eza Ngam, not Iza. <laughs> Don't call me Iza. <laughs> Some call me Ezra, ah, me Ezra, you know, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah. Those people, people can't pronounce my name and it's, it's so funny because it's short. Wait, it's Ezra. 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 It's E-Z-A. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Gauteng in Carltonville. Mm. Just a small mining area and that's where my journey began as a photographer. Away, yeah. away, away, away. Yeah, thank you so much. I don't know if I have to introduce myself. Do I have to? They have to really. yeah, yeah, they have to. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't like uploading anything on like YouTube just for people to get to know myself as a photographer. But anyway, my name is Michael Junior Sequaida and I am originally from Spoke Park, Moto, uh, around Polokwani. And yeah, my journey, I feel like I ran out of, I ran out of ways when I tried to describe myself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So not happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But basically, stormy photography, it's just um, a business that actually captures people, captures images of people. And um, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. But yeah, stormy photography is all about capturing people's moments and yeah. um, sharing it with them. Yeah, that's all stormy photography does. Yeah. And for me, stormy photography has been something that's evolving. Even now, it's still evolving. Yeah. I'm starting to focus myself, my business, on incorporating people. You know, yeah. But we're going to talk more about that as we progress with the podcast. You know, yeah. About how you guys um, view your businesses or view your photographers, photography in terms of uh, the mandatory part of it as well as the artistic part of it. So we're going to talk about that as we actually go on with the podcast. So without wasting time, I'd like to get to the questions. Um, yeah. You know, the first one is actually, how do you balance your creativity and your business side of your work, actually? How do you actually balance that? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can just answer that. Um, for me... <laughs> So you're saying business and the artistic side of it? Yes, yes. Um, obviously, in this business that we're in, you know, there's nothing more expensive than the equipment we use. 
Yeah. So I think that's where the craziest part of this is you want to make, uh, you want to monetize your art, you want to monetize your skills and talent so that you can make money to mm. buy more equipment so that you can channel back into your art. Mm. So in terms of balancing it, I'd say, uh, just do me that. I just take pictures. That's all I do. <laughs> Just take pictures. I see. But I see. In, in terms of business, I take pictures of corporations, people, mm, mm, stuff. Mm, and mm. artistically, I maintain my art by creating my own projects that I work on by myself in my mm, own terms. Mm, mm, I mm, work with creatives, other creatives. Mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> by now, Karin, I choose. When I'm listening to your response, I'm thinking about how. Like, I don't want to say total opposite, but I'm just going the other direction. Um, yeah. So, how I try to balance my creativity and like the business side of things, when you start with creativity, there hasn't been actually a lot of creativity. Um, usually, it's just me um, reproducing the same thing, basically. Um, mm. There's no touch of creativity there. Mm. That's what I want to say. Um, it's just a matter of catering to the people's needs. Mm. Um, mm. Just making sure that people get what they want. Mm. Um, it doesn't have to be creative for me as long as the client is happy. Um, mm. So yeah, that's what I try to do. I don't. I spend most of my time focusing on the business side of things mm. um, instead of focusing on creativity. So yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you guys for sharing that. And I feel like that's actually the main reason I brought specifically two of you guys here together. Because I think the way you guys look at business and photography, it's it's different, to be honest. The way I see it. That's why you said that you think like it's completely different with the way you approach your business. And yeah, I think that's cool actually. And that that should actually, despite the fact that we folk we look at our ventures differently, that should also in like in should uh how can I put this like influence us not influence actually but like it doesn't mean that the fact that we look at our ventures differently we can't collaborate you know this actually bring you guys together to actually shoot a podcast I feel like it's us collaborating and sharing our insights on our businesses yeah so and for me i would say i'm really i won't say i'm opposite you and opposite you as well but i'm kind of in between in the middle between you know balancing my photography side of business as well as my artistic side of business because um i think for me photography has always been a way to express myself you know i used to draw a lot draw pictures like a lot when I was growing up yeah. but as I grew um I don't know where that went <laughs> I, was... yeah, I don't know where that that ended up like I ended up not having as much passion for drawing as well I think maybe it's because I picked up this tool to actually draw in a way so photography is just a way of drawing in a way for myself you know but at the same time like you said um the equipment you use is very expensive so you have to actually maintain it and actually uh upgrade to better take nice pictures so i've always been in uh in a in a, a in between the artistic part of photography as well as the um, mandatory part of photography and that's why i was saying when i was introducing my business that's for stormy photography it's an evolving business and I feel like it's going to look completely different with the way it looks right now uh, in the next five, uh, ten years. I, I know that it's going to look different and yeah, it's just good to actually express and talk about it right now. So yeah, let's move to, move to the uh, third question and yeah, thank you for your answers guys. But yeah, the third question is, can you share... <laughs> A challenging moment in your photography venture and valuable lessons that you have learned from it yeah uh, yeah immediately when you 
read that question, I actually saw this experience that I had. And yeah, I'm actually going to talk about that. So there was a time, obviously we are photographers, so we get booked for like many things. Yeah. Um, sometimes you get booked for something that you know that you are not going to cook. But for the experience and what you're going to take from it, you accept the booking anyways. So mm -hmm. I was booked for the way they put it, it was a network event, but there was going to be fashion. Mm -hmm. They showed mm -hmm. me the example of what they wanted and I was like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, when I got there, <clears throat> one of the things is the lighting was bad. Yeah. And yes. you know, as a photographer, <laughs> the light has to be perfect. When the lighting is not giving, the pictures won't um, be as what you wanted to give. So, regardless, I didn't try to show that I'm like, okay, the lighting is bad here. I still worked with it. Um, there was another guy on the spot. He was a videographer and thing. Mm. Uh, but he had his equipment. But I tried to be like my own man and be like, I'm going to do this with what I have. Um, mm. I'm just gonna cut it short. The pictures after the editing ish. Yeah, I, I was even even scared to to deliver the pictures to the clients, yes. but I did so regardless. Yes, and yeah, I never got paid for for my work that day. I figure it's because it wasn't mm. it wasn't the quality that they they would pay for. Mm -hmm. So from there, I learned that you, you it's good to actually <coughs> challenge yourself. <coughs> mm. it's good to always challenge yourself because you're going to come out better than when you went in so what I've learned from this is that lighting is very important and also equipment mm. Yeah, well, mm. so before you accept any gigs just know where you stand mm. because you don't want to devalue yourself and also devalue the reputation of the client so make sure you are good before you actually accept that gig Away, so, away. Ah, shut up, man. Hey, I can't imagine how it was, man. <laughs> talking to the client after. Yeah, hey, bro. Bro. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think one trauma that I have here is that I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. So whatever I do, I have to do it like perfectly. Yeah. So now, I remember last year we did a, a project called Kanoni Religion. I'm not sure if you still remember it. I think that was the first time I met you. Yeah, I think it was the one the first time we met you because I was working with Kumoto. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. So we did that, man. Um, and then around the same time, the camera broke. Yo, like my, like literally went into a depressive episode because of that. Like yeah. The camera broke. And then you spoke to the people and everything. Yeah, I had to speak to the people that I was working with. I fixed the camera broke, and then I had to use my last money to fix it, which cost me like thousands. <laughs> so that's when I realized, mm, no, yes, man. this thing is is, is real. Yeah, How did you break though, man? How did yeah, you break? It was the SD card reader, so it wasn't working. Just stop, just stop reading. SD card reader. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, I see. I so see. just stopped reading, and then after that, when I took it, I had to like this mental aid. Mm. Part of it. Mm. To reach that small line and yeah, 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 I see, I see, I see, I see. So I see. that was the only trouble I had. Yeah. But one thing also uh, is working with clients, man. And then your, your, your. I would personally not shoot someone who's undressed. Yeah, well, like someone who's naked. Okay, let me just put it. It's nude. 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 Yeah. So yeah, yeah. sometimes I feel like we we accept gigs or I accept gigs and I see this mm -mm, this is this is going against my moral values or beliefs. Because mm -hmm. personally, I wouldn't want my kids or my sisters, younger siblings, to see mm -hmm. nudity on my work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always try to keep it clean as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I also had that. Sometimes I get gigs and they're good pay, but I'm like. Yeah, yeah, values yeah. first. Yeah, values yeah. first. Yeah. That first. Mm. So, mm. in terms of that, I always learn. Like what I what I learned is that um, no matter how painful this journey is, mm. it's always required. Because even though it took me so much to fix the camera, 
Mm. I think a couple of weeks later, I got a I got a call. It was I worked with a client. I got a call from her and she was like, "Bah, we got our work on Bona, on on Bona magazine." Mm. So it was like big downfall. Mm. And then immediately something could happen. Oh um, yeah, so yeah. It's like those ups and downs. Mm. And mm. now mm. if you don't learn to control your emotions while doing this work, it's gonna shy because every time. Where if you go down, you go down. If you go high, you go really high. Yeah. Mm. So that's mm. it. Like just be in between and just accept it yeah. for what it is. Yeah. yeah. I th- I think explaining that actually uh it makes me think about niche. You know. Mm. Makes me think about niche because that's something I have been thinking about so much lately. You know, mm. about what's my niche? What do I do? Because, like you said, um, taking new new. new Nudes, pictures of people who are not very yeah. it actually it's against your beliefs yeah. you know and i think um yeah like i just want to ask like uh hear from you guys what do you think of niching actually or focusing on specific niche to actually um kill on that niche or um what do you think about like tackling on different things because I already know that you have like a very like different answers, like different answer from what um, you might give. So I'm just curious to hear that, you know, like, what do you think about niche in, in like the photography venture? Um, so having a niche apparently is important. Hmm. Um, I say apparently because that's what people say. But to me, it is not that important. Mm. Because um, the type of person that I am, there's this, there's this um, phrase or quote that says that jack of all trades. Yeah, I think the full the full phrase goes: uh, jack of all trades is a master of none, but is always better than the master of one. So basically. Long story short, I have to I have to check that, bro. I have yeah, to check that. To check that. <laughs> it's, it's a nice fit. Yeah. It basically um implies that um instead of doing one thing, why not actually like try to master different things? Mm. Mm. In that way, you have um a broader market, mm. and when you have a broad market, it's it's a business at the end of the day. So broad market means more profit. Mm. So, because I'm on the business side of things, that's what I try to do. I try to do more than one thing. Um, mm. For example, I do sports. Um, I have a niche in sports, um, events, um, portraits, mm. um, whatever, whatever photography um, solution you need. I try to to accept and be like, I can do that. Mm. Even though I might teach myself and I don't know it, I'm still learning. Mm. Well, hence, I'm trying to be a master of like many things. Mm-hmm. So that's how I approach the niche um, topic. Um, I try to to enter different niches, many niches, as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you, my man? The entrance, yeah. Um, okay. Before this photography thing, you know, yeah. Um, I used to be a writer. Okay. Yeah. Before this, all of this, I wanted to be like Drake, Kendrick Lamar, Drake Cole. Yeah, yeah. And then, as I grew older, it became more and more difficult to speak. Like as a giant, it just becomes more and more difficult to speak out. Mm. Mm, mm. So writing, now from rapping, I actually wrote like journals and diaries and, and I wrote poems. Mm, so mm. I wanted to be creative in my writing, not just write and do it. And then from that, um, I went from writing like long things to like really short quotes, like, like just yeah. like talking short. Yeah. I, um, I, I, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt. I have like a favorite quote. You keep on like uploading. Like I really do like it. Mm-hmm. It's like ego is the enemy. Like that's. Yeah, ego that's, is the enemy. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's so, so much. from that, and then when I grabbed the camera. I wanted to st- like to express myself a lot. Mm, I'm mm. writing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, even if when I post on Instagram or anything, I have to post something and write something about it or mm. how it makes me feel. Mm. So mm. me, I'm 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 generally just 
based on storytelling. That's I would say that's my niche. Mm. How I start, uh, how I tell the story is will just depend on my emotions at that time and how how far I can take my creativity, maybe visually. Uh, mm. Mm. But with writing, I know I'm gonna write something about it, and then after writing something about it, I'm gonna think about visuals. Mm. So however they come in my mind. That so I'd say I'm a storyteller. Basically. Yeah, I see. And I, I see. use visuals and writing. Mm. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I really, I really appreciate it. And I think to answer that question, because I also have to like answer it for you guys to hear what I, I'm about to say. You know, um, at the moment, I don't like doing things I am not good at. Maybe that might be my problem. But at the same time, um, I believe that if you actually niche down and focus on one thing or maybe something along those lines something along those that particular niche i believe that you are able to actually charge more because you show your credibility in that specific niche you know so for me my niche is actually portrait as well as doing events you know but originally like originally i'd say it's portraits because that's something i enjoy doing I enjoy it gives it gives me the luxury of choosing what I want the certain project to be like or certain picture to turn out to be like um instead of doing something like um maybe real estate photography shooting houses or something else I like shooting something that's going to give me time to actually express how I feel as well you know so portraits is the first thing and the reason why I chose events too, it's that I saw that shooting events or shooting, okay, shooting events actually, it's actually profitable and it's more easier to do because there are always events around, you know. So I only, sh I only try to shoot portraits and events, but at the moment, something I'm also interested in is shooting like music videos, you know. That's something I'm interested in because I enjoy music and i would like to have um a contribution in that kind of uh field you know so yeah that's what i think about niche and yeah before we go on to other questions um uh, i'd like us to take a short break and then i'll get back yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were just talking about niches uh, before uh, we went to the break. So yeah, without wasting time, um, yeah, uh, the third question, it's about networking actually. Mm -hmm. How do you guys approach networking within the photography community and business to engage, to enhance your skills and opportunities? Like, how do you, how do you, try to network with the right people that are going to benefit your whole benefit your endeavor in the right way how do you approach that um so for for as long as i can remember um when i enter a network space what i first try to do is i first try to So I was saying, I first tried to actually um, let the atmosphere sink in, just to see, okay, who who can I approach, who can I go talk to. I, I just I don't go there and just approach anyone. And secondly, I try to see if there's a photographer in the same space. Um, so I always try to go for the photographer or whoever is in charge of capturing the experience. And that's where I actually like get advice from. Just to, I, I always actually get their side of photography, how they started, and um, how did they get where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I ask them like their opinions, advice. What do you think I should do in terms of like this? Like basically, experience that I actually um, things that I experience, and just ask them how they would actually go about the, that experience if it was them. 
So that's, I always focus on the photographer that's there. And obviously, if it's a business space, I try to actually um, offer my services actually to people, um, offering free pictures just to to get the contact. And you never know what what's going to happen in a few days. Maybe they call me for something else. So I just go there with a business mind and also a, a learning mentality, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, thank you, man. Thank you. Um, for me, with, with in terms of of networking, I'd say just pushing uh, my, myself out there as much as I can. Um, today, at least we have Instagram. Mm. So I use like Instagram as my canvas. If it's not Instagram, it's Pixel. If it's not Pixels, um, what's this? Uh, it's it's Adobe Behance as a platform for, for creatives. So when I go to spaces like events and stuff like that, I'd say same here, I always go for like photographers. Um, I always go for modelers, like people, which, and also business people. Uh, so I find myself mostly in, 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 in art galleries. If it's not art galleries, it's events just based on photography or videography. So in those events, I always try and speak to people um, get their Instagrams and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like sometimes speaking to people without the intention of actually working them with them is, is good. Because now, if you speak to a person and now your, 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 like your only goal is to get them to work with you, I think you, you miss out on the most important things. Like, he said, like getting their experience on, on maybe whatever journey they are on. Mm. Um, mm. So I think it always helps, like having an intimate relationship or conversation with the person, just outside of photography or mm. outside of your specialties or mm. something like that. So I think that's how my networking has come. Like most of the people that I've worked with, that's how I've actually spoken to them. But we just had a conversation. Um, I'm actually curious. Like, I'm really curious. When you say you speak to them um, just to get to know them, have an intimate relationship, yeah. like, can you please like try to elaborate on that? Um, because uh, maybe like I met someone, he's holding a camera, I'm holding a camera too. Um, I think the way I, you know, I would talk to the person, all we're going to talk about, like, it's like shut a speed aperture. Uh, <laughs> oh, which that's lens? What we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's that's that, that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. But some yeah. of those things you already know. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, um, so I met this other lady. Well, I met this other lady at City ICC um, early September. Mm. Um, so when I got there, it was it was different stalls, like different settings. Mm. Um, there were. There was DSTV, there was um, Music Africa, there was Netflix, like those big names, you know? mm. And I saw this lady and she was watching a movie. So there was like a screen, mm. there was a room with a screen, not room per se, but it was just a setting with a screen. Um, and then students who were partaking in, like who students who, who did filmmaking, mm. yeah, who went to film school showed their videos, like their movies there, but like 20 minutes, yeah, well. 20 and minutes. Then, yeah, like the shortest were like 20 minutes maybe. Okay. 30 if, if that long. Yeah. Yeah, well. So when I got there, I sat down, I saw like there were different people just greeted, hello, hello, hello. Mm. Got my popcorn, sat there and watched the movie. Mm. And then this lady, was I holding, I think I was holding a camera, I'm not sure. Yeah, well. Just put my camera there, I just watched the movie, watched the movie. And then we just started having a conversation about the movie. Uh -huh. And then that's how we, we got to know each other. Oh, I'm from this place, I'm from this place. I do this, oh, I do this. And then we just had an intimate conversation about the space itself, like the world of creatives and stuff like that, outside of just the cameras and stuff uh -huh. like that, and, uh -huh. and getting to work with each other. And then we just took our Instagrams. And now we're just in connection, we're still mm. connecting. We haven't worked on anything, but I know that in future she could be, she could want something from me because mm. I'm a photographer. 
people will always want pictures in yeah, yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah, well, she, she's going to think of me with, oh, that guy. Yeah, well. But if you connect with someone from... Because I feel, I feel like people will always remember you for, for your character more than anything. If you portray like a really good character, you yeah, portray like yeah, good yeah, energies, people yeah. are going to remember, no man, there's this guy yeah, yeah. that I once met, mm. he, he had this kind of character that I liked, mm. and then people are going to remember about that, like that about you. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, man, that's interesting. Man. I don't know, uh, okay, for me, that's, has, that has always been the case. You know? Maybe it's because maybe I run out of stuff to talk, to say when you know, I like, meet this big guy, you know. Mm. And I ended up talking about like the apertures like the shutter speed. I remember I you remember that uh, the Sony event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I met yeah, anyway, I met I met Ufenzo <laughs> That guy. Yeah. He's actually on my <laughs> on my thingy. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 He's on my uh, wallpaper. So I met this guy and then ah uh, like no, I was shooting those girls, those Chinese girls who were like, you know, yeah, yeah. stands and everything. I was shooting and then he came to me, he was like, uh, hold the camera like this and don't do this. He was like basically showing me how to take pictures. Yeah. I was like, hey, that's interesting. Let me actually ask him something. Yeah. What I asked him, I didn't try to, actually my mind didn't think of any intimate kind of thing I can ask about him. All I asked him was about his business. Yeah how he does work, why he actually, how he uploads music videos on his channel that he took of other artists, you know, those are the things I ask him, you know, and uh, it's very interesting that you actually bring that up, you know, yeah, yeah, to actually get to know the person, yeah, outside of, yeah, outside of the photography venture, and yeah, thank you so much for sharing it, but anyway, I wanted to answer this, everyone, before we move to another question, <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, my answer to this one, how I actually do network, it's, it has always been from, from uh, I think high school, that's when I realized like the importance of networking, or surrounding yourself with people with the same, so like the right mindset and everything, back in high school. So what I used to do actually is to want to, um, obviously we all wanted to get the good grades and everything. So I actually started getting recognized for you know, my school work um, once I was in grade 11. And I think the guys didn't directly impact how I performed, but they had a very, they had like, um, since I spent most of the time with them, uh, it actually helped me. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is that I wanted to spend more time with these guys because they were actually getting good grades yeah. and I knew that spending more time with these guys would actually help me yeah. but how I went about that was different I didn't go to those guys and actually try to um, want to socialize and like be with them yeah. or what I did was I worked on myself first by that I mean that I tried to work so hard on myself first uh, in order to you know develop myself get better results and I have always followed the same approach with everything I do either photography either uh, working either like working out and everything I don't approach I really I do approach people sometimes you know but uh, I found myself in situations where people approach me because I have curated and I have created this kind of person I am right now that's worth of being the same um, space, yeah. Yeah, the certain type of people, you know. Um, yeah, I always try to work on myself first, and yeah, that's how I actually approach networking. You know? yeah. But yeah, we can move to another question, unless you wanna add on that, or if you have any comment. Yeah. Good. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. The fifth question is like, can you share two projects? that we are particularly proud of and that and what made it stand out of like all the projects that you have yeah at least like two projects yeah uh, since you guys don't have like the project review we're just going to put them on the screen yeah. so that like people can see them 
or maybe a link below so that people can see them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, no. You made it to break. But we're back now. <laughs> we're back now. Uh, please forgive me for my uh, my not giving English. Uh, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to build it, but yeah. Anyway, uh, the fifth question about uh, can you share like a project and why is it your favorite project? I have all my projects are my favorite projects. Okay. 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 But I'm gonna speak about this one particularly because. I did it in this like this room, Mabo. The specific yeah, this the specific space, yeah. yeah. So it's called the shadows. Um and I did it in, 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 in June. June, July. You know, just after I think when Vex started. Um so it was me and the gents, me Sia and Clayt. So this one time we was load shedding and we're like, let's do something. And then we just started taking pictures, took them pictures. And then fast forward, maybe two weeks later, sitting here. Uh, and I'm thinking, there was, I think around that time, something had happened here in Unibok. It was just chaos and shit. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we, me and these gents don't usually speak. Well. So if someone is going through something, we usually scream, mark your cell. So we just that's you say what? You say Maguio Sela means let's go drink. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> during, during so, load shedding. Yeah. No 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 was, but during low shedding was when we shot. Oh. Yeah? And then now a couple of weeks went by or days, I'm not sure. And then I just sat here. I think it was after drinking, but I couldn't sleep. I mm. And I sat here and I was like, why do we consume alcohol so much? And then it clicked. And then we can't speak. Uh, we don't we don't we can't we can't communicate our emotions mm. so one way we can is to drink and then we're probably gonna forget whatever <laughs> we've told each other yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna black out yeah. or something like that and then we we created this project um i used behance and canva and all those and it just spoke on on mental health mm. men men's mental health mm. uh, yeah mm. i think that's what caught that that's what triggered me to actually mm. push it to be a, a men's mental health thing because i think june or july is men's mental health month or something yeah. mm. one of those months oh, i think it's june it's june yeah, yeah. yeah. so and nobody talks about it. yeah nobody talks nobody about it talks about it yeah that's crazy yeah so now since it was that and i was triggered i i, I did this project um and i called it the shadows because we, even though we showed our faces, we didn't necessarily show our full faces, which speaks to how almost every gent I've met, almost every gent I've met, is going through something, but they won't talk about it. Uh -huh. So they always portray this strong demeanor, uh -huh. they always portraying this alpha male, but deep down, something is hurting them. Uh -huh. So that project is 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 really close to my heart because it speaks of something that we that's why i was like writing and photography mm. i combine them and express how i feel mm. so every time i speak about the project it's actually me reflecting in a way which i have things that i'm going through but i can't speak about them but i can only creatively show you and say i created this thing a voice speaks about this and this and this and this and this mm. there's actually a poem to it mm. um there's a poem that i wrote that goes with the project and the visuals and everything. So that's the project that say it's close to my heart recently. Recently. Yeah. But so every so other project yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. What about you? Um firstly I have to reiterate the fact that uh, I'm not in the creative space. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So my um projects are mostly um tied in with like people. Basically, mm -hmm. like I said, events, um, social functions. So, recently, you said two, I'll just keep it brief. So, recently, there was a, a event happening on campus, basically, it's a big event. 
and basically they approached me to to come and capture those moments there. Um, there was like different universities. It's it was an event by universities in South Africa, USAF. So to be in that space, to actually have people take my work back with them to their provinces was actually a a big thing for me, you know, because what I do is I'm based in Cape Town and you always aspire to get something out in any way you can. So that was what I was proud of. Um, and another project, it happened in July. It was basically um, a, I was a facilitator for like a program with matric students. So I was just there to actually guide them to provide assistance, but my other role is to be the photographer. Mm -hmm. So to actually be around these kids and to capture these moments for them, it was a one week program, mm -hmm. basically like a camp. Mm -hmm. So you just you just learn to 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 meet, to learn, to actually talk to people and to capture those experiences. It's things that they're gonna take back with them and probably remember for for the longest of time. So to actually be a part of that was a good experience. I had the um, hard copy of actually the picture at Parliament um, and another picture at the back. It was at the Constitutional Court. Wow. On that day, the main the, the theme of that day was basically justice and justice in society. Mm -hmm. So we went to court and Parliament mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that good picture in front of the court and the Parliament was actually my highlight, which I don't have to show now, but I'll send yeah, it. Yeah, just send it so yeah. that we can just put it uh, on the screen as well as on the description. Yeah. So I can see those are my two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can you can just give one more. Ish, I, <laughs> for I, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. um, ish, you see this thing of choosing projects. Now I have to think. So <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna say it because I'm gonna say it. There's a project I did last year. Um, so it was work I did from January until I think July, because I think I started posting it in, on Instagram on, but around Ju around August. I think it was like two months. Um, so it was from like pictures, every other picture that I thought was good that I took from January until like July. From like I think July I started editing and stuff, preparing for the project, mm. preparing codes and stuff like that. Mm. So this project was called the Freelance. The Freelance. Yeah. Um, so it was just freestyling. I was just expressing myself however way I felt like was good. Yeah? And then I, in those, um, just before I came this side, because I came this side I think around February. So. In Jan, I did something with my sister, my little sister, and my younger brother. Um, so when I, I took those pictures, we were just playing around. But if you'd see the picture, you wouldn't think it, it was taken outside because we used a bed sheet and a pillowcase. Mm. You know? And then we took those pictures and then I edited those pictures and they came out so good. They came out so good that I thought of framing the picture and and and, and actually exhibiting it. Mm. So and I took another picture with my friend. Um I think it was around June because I think I went home. Yeah. I think it was around June during the holidays. I went back home with guys. I took pictures with two of my friends and then I named the first picture that I took in January the chosen one. And then I named that other one, um, what did I name it, Ganem? Ah, forgot the name. Ah, but I, I named that other picture, Oof, can't think of the name, guys. But yeah, so I got those two pictures, framed them, um, and then I got the opportunity to actually exhibit them in Swaziland. Swaziland? Yeah. Damn, that's okay. So. I didn't, at first, when I did the, the whole project thing, the freelance thing, I didn't think I would exhibit yeah. them. Mm -hmm. well. mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of pictures like that actually made me realize, Witty, this is this is something I can I can make something out of this. Yeah, well. mm -hmm. So from then, I've just every other picture that I take and I see it's good enough. I'm like, I wanna frame this. Yeah, well. mm -hmm. yeah. I see, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, I guess for me, um, I had I. 
the pictures that are my favorite, uh, I framed them. Yeah, I framed them. And the first one, it's actually it was here in Unibel. Mm. It's not Unibel 2, Unibel 3, it's Unibel 2 there. Yeah. I took this one lady. Um, her name is Lizzie. Yeah, her name is Lizzie. She had like um, long hair, you know, a bit Kenyan, but like African. Yeah, so Afro looking. Yeah, 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 so I took her pic. I took her the pictures, you know, and then the day after that, I edited the pictures and I edited the, that picture in black and white. I'll show. I will just put it there so that you can see it. I edited it in black and white and. Uh, I don't usually say this, but I felt some type of way, man, when I was looking at that picture. Mm. There was something that I couldn't put in words. Yeah. You know, I was really, um, and oftentimes when I explain how I f how pictures make me feel, to be honest, I'm like, I don't think people actually do understand how actually a picture, like a simple, um, well thought picture, can actually. You know, evoke some certain emotions yeah. that you have. You know, I feel like you guys as photographers can actually realize that, can actually relate. Actually. Yeah. But that picture was so good to a point where I was like, "Nah, I'm framing this picture. There is no way I'm gonna keep it on my phone only." Yeah. I had to frame that one. <laughs> so yeah, it was a picture with Lizzie, and thank you so much to Lizzie, who helped me take that picture. That was so nice. That was yeah. so nice. You know. And the second picture that I can say, um, it's um, my favorite. You know. Matter of fact, all my pictures, like you said, are my favorite. I have people saying that your work is nice. I really appreciate these people. I really appreciate them so much. I appreciate you guys watching this so much. Um, always saying that, hey man, your work is nice. Your work is nice. I appreciate these people. Um, but I would like to believe that Michael is Stormy Speaker's fan, you know. Yeah. I'd like to believe that, you know. I, I be like I love my work so much to a point where I don't know. Uh, I, I love my work. You know? But basically that picture, uh, it was taken back in my hometown in Spoke Park. Yeah. Yeah. And then I called I even named it. I named I named it legendary. <laughs> so uh yeah, it's basically a picture of a taxi and a person approaching. Yeah, I remember that picture. You know it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know it? Yeah, I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll just put it there. So that picture actually really resonated with me because uh, I was playing around as well, you know. I was playing around and I feel like the best pictures are taken when you're not actually intending to take yeah. them, to take them. When you're least expected. Least expected. Yeah. When you just wake up and ah, let me just take a picture. You pre you create you create the best way, especially when you're focusing on the artistic side of it. Mm -hmm. So that picture was so good that the guy with, the guy that you see on the picture, mm. the whole thing was not scripted. So he was approaching the text was going there, and then. Uh, I took that picture and then when the guy got to where I took him picture because I was using like the zoom lens, the long lens. So he was like, um, he was like meters, like meters away from me. So when he came to me, I was like, hey, my man, I should, I took a picture of you. And then the guy went so crazy, man. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, you can use this picture as like a book cover or something. Mm. <laughs> and then, yeah, man, it's, it's really, and yeah, it's really, it's really nice looking back to that picture and when I actually took the picture. Yeah. But like, yeah, that, those are my two favorite pictures. And, yeah, and I thank you so much for sharing that today. Yeah. I'll just make sure, guys, after you watch the whole podcast, you go through the description and look at their work. And yeah, check the Instagram as well. So yeah, I think this is long enough, but question six is, Uh, we're going to keep this on very short now. Mm -hmm. It's what advice do you have for aspiring photographers looking to turn their passion into successful ventures? If I answer that, should I say that? Yeah. 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 yeah.
But in the meantime, see if this one is recording, you just answer it. Um, so, all of the things that I tell people are based on my experience. Yes. So there is some sort of a bias there. So, what I, what I would tell them, um, based on if I knew what I knew back then, this mm -hmm. is what I would tell them. Um, so, obviously, you, you get a camera, mm -hmm. and you don't have to start big. Mm -hmm. um, so many people underestimate like the power of any camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, when you get a camera, it doesn't have to be the best one. Make sure you, you, you master that camera. Mm -hmm. You master that camera, uh, you, you get to know the basics of photography, how light works. Um, it's different how, like, it's different to know how light works and to know how the camera works. Yeah. Exactly. So if you exactly. you have to focus on both, mm -hmm. um, make sure you master both. Um, only then can you feel like if you feel like you've mastered it, then you can move up. Mm -hmm. Once you move up, it's going to be easier for you to actually um, utilize what you get after you move from there because you've done so many, you've done it so many times before. It's like second nature now mm -hmm. and then it's going to be easier for you than someone who actually starts with better equipment mm -hmm. who actually is, is starting to do the thing mm -hmm. so just um put all your effort in actually mastering the the thing and yeah that's that's the only advice that i will give mm -hmm. and obviously if you're focused on the business side of things then you're gonna see um you're gonna start to um charge but you actually see how it actually improves and you're gonna charge more than you used to charge when you start as you go as you go higher. That's true, that's true. That's yeah, thank you, thank you. So yeah, what can you advise aspiring photographers? <laughs> you just keep it short, it's cool. <laughs> um yeah. what advice? <laughs> It's difficult to just say one thing, um, but In terms of advice to an aspiring photographer, I'd say I'd say like in, in whatever you do, just try by all means to stay true to your to your like the, the value or the very very first reason you started um, doing photography. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. I, it's, oh yeah, because there's nothing. Yeah. Um, but like that one is recording, so yeah, we'll just use it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say just stick to, to the very, very, very first reason you started photography, mm. always. Mm. If you said, I want to change people's lives, then make sure that if you're doing this photography thing, change people's lives. Mm. Because I think the, the most, like the, the worst thing that could happen is that you somehow along the way through your journey lose yourself and your values mm -hmm. lose your character now it's more about chasing the bag than it is about changing people's lives so mm -hmm. if 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 somewhere through your journey that happens then it simply means that you've lost like the, the whole worth of what you're doing mm -hmm. in the first place so, mm -hmm. so just stick to your values and the very very first reason you started photography mm -hmm. yeah uh, thank you so much uh i think i'll answer this question my answer to this question and my answer to the next question is the same thing so i won't answer this one anymore. so yeah uh our last question actually it's um can you share a personal mantra or philosophy that that has guided you in your photography journey and business pursuits. Um, it doesn't have to be like uh, your photography venture. It can be about like maybe how you feel about almost everything. 
in this life that we're living right now? Can you please share that? Maybe it can be a little code or anything. You can just like share that. Uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> it's not a code, basically. I don't like to code. <coughs> There's a few codes that I actually like to code, but um, this one is actually my my own philosophy. Obviously, as time goes, maybe I'll see it differently. But what I want to say is that sometimes you, when you know something, then good for you. When you don't know something, it's best to ask. Mm. But sometimes there are points where you have to accept that, okay, you don't know this, and you know that you don't know, therefore just sit back. Just accept that you don't know. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's what I want to say. Yeah, powerful, man. That's powerful. I have to watch that to get it sinking, but that's powerful. Thank you, man. Um, so, yeah, what do you think, Um So, the thing is, man, you know, yeah, my, I'm a question so hard, man. My bad, so, man. My bad, my bad. Um, but, personal philosophy. So, I, I, I usually, this held a thing, man. Uh, started as a clothing brand. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, if I can throw a lot. A what? It's music. A what? Clothing brand. Okay, sure. Yeah. So I wanted to use the name for a clothing brand, but I'm still working on that. Okay, sure. um, And back then, I used to tell myself, whatever happens, love above all. Mm. Yeah. Love above all, mm. no matter mm. what. Mm. So mm. if you're doing it for love, Mm. Just, just do it for love. Mm. Mm. So do it from the heart as much as possible. Mm. Mm. Because if, if you do it from the heart, then it means with its raw, it's like raw emotions. It's how you feel deep inside. Um, mm. So do it from the heart and always remember that it's love above all. Mm. 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 That's powerful as well, man. These are powerful quotes and mantras. Yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that with me, guys. Um, why? Um, I, I said my answer from the question before this. It's going to be the same as the answer for this question. So basically, something I try to live by, always, all the time, um, and that 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 I'd like other people to actually follow and abide to, mm -hmm. is to actually stick to what you told yourself that you wanna do. Mm -hmm. Don't do something, don't feel like doing something and then do it for like a week and then after that you stop. Don't do that to yourself. I don't feel like it's a good thing to do. I think everyone should actually um, have goals, you know, and then after you have a goal, you actually follow that goal for a year to five years, 10 years, and then after that, Try to see where this goal takes you because you can't succeed after working for a very short period of time. I see this often with a lot of people that I meet, man. I see this with a lot of people, bro. They'd be telling me stuff like, hey, my man, I want to go to the gym. Then the guy would go to the gym for like a month. And then after that, when you look at the person, he's no longer going to the gym, you know. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that when you actually have goals, you have to like always like try to stick, stick, stick on the goal. Um, you have to stick on the goal, but um, you don't have to change that goal actually. You can try to adapt and instead of pivoting and focusing on your energy on something else, you wasted a lot of time. Don't, I, I don't believe some people have to um, pivot all the time, pivot all the time, juggle a lot of things, you know. I don't think so. I think people have to try to adapt on the initial goals they had for themselves. That what I, that's what I always try to live up to. And that's what I always try to, um, try to implement in my business. That's why I'm saying that Stormy Photography is an evolving business. I don't feel like I'll ever leave this brand, you know, but I'm going to adapt as much as I can in the field of photography and video edit. I guess or videography. So yeah, I think that's that actually concludes our podcast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can just 
say uh can you just uh say your uh, handles guys so that people can actually see your work there or actually follow you on social media and yeah we'll just close it there oh yeah, yeah. so personal account um personal handle reflex Hwapa. um that's reflex Hwapa. um and then where i put my work um reflex photography 18 that's both for instagram and facebook so, yeah um but I use Instagram mostly, and then you're just gonna see links to other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so at, on Instagram, I'm at yours truly helder, yours truly dot helder. No or way. you can just search my full name as a helder now. Away, away, yeah. away, away. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's Stormy Photography on Instagram, and Stormy only on facebook i'll also put the link to uh, your guys like your pages including your favorite works and with that being said uh that we reached the end of our podcast <laughs> the cameras are not working so <laughs> it's that one <laughs> hopefully it's working <laughs> but yeah that's all gents i appreciate it let me just tell you ah man. appreciate it man Away, away, boy.